Hi guys, Rob here. In this video, I'm looking at three ghost tours that you can take in Melbourne. So whether you're into the paranormal or not, I'll show you what you can expect on these tours. I'll show you some photos and video that I took, and maybe you can see something paranormal that I couldn't see. At the end of the video, I'll show you my favorite tour. So let's go. At number three, Old Melbourne Ghost Tour. This is run by Latin Tours. The tour starts from Federation Square, under the big I, as shown in the video. Here you'll be greeted by one of the tour guides. On the tour I had, it was just a small group, no more than 20 people. So that was a good size. The tour guide I had for the night was Chloe, who was really informative and made for a fun tour. Gentlemen, welcome to the Lantern Ghost Tours, Old Melbourne Ghost Tour. My name is Chloe and I will be your guide for this evening. Honest, <laughs> and do we have any fence sitters? You know, I might believe if I saw something, but I'm not sure. In answer to the question she's asking, I'll give you my opinion when I sum up the tour at the end. The thing though is that you just keep an open mind throughout our tour. Don't shut yourself off to any experiences that you might be able to have. And whilst we go through our various stops this evening, just keep checking in with your body as well. We often find that guests on our tours will feel quite affected in certain stops. You might feel a sudden chill, you might feel like something is touching you. So the first stop is across the road, where the guide gives you a bit of history on Melbourne. The first haunted place they talk about is Flinders Street Station, being haunted by a ghost. Flinders Street Station is also home to a ballroom, a gymnasium, and also a ghost. Now, does anybody have to catch the train home tonight? On the adjacent side of the road is the Young and Jackson Hotel, which is said to be haunted by a woman in a long gown. Now, we're about to head off to our next stop on the tour, everyone, and it's about to get a lot spookier from here on in. The tour takes you onto to Hossier Lane, which is famous in Melbourne for its graffiti. Back in the 1800s, the area was a textile area when the laneways were dark and dingy. The ghost of Frederick Demi is said to haunt this laneway, a serial killer back in the day. As a tour wanders the streets and back laneways of Melbourne, you'll get told of some of Melbourne's darker stories. I like how the ghost stories are told with a bit of background to them. At one supposedly haunted spot, you are given these dividing rods that you can actually ask the spirit yes or no questions. I did ask if the ghost could make the lights flicker. Someone in the tour said they saw a light in the car park flicker, but I didn't see this. One stop is the Princess Theatre, which is supposedly haunted by one of the most infamous ghosts in Melbourne, Frederick Baker, an opera singer who died on stage during a performance back in 1888 and has never left the premises. Chloe will tell you a number of ghostly stories about him. The tour goes on roughly for an hour and a half. You can ask questions, and there's heaps more that I haven't shown in this video, which you can see if you take the tour. Getting back to the question she asked at the beginning of the tour, so no matter what your stance was, if you believe in ghosts or not, I think your opinion is not gonna change after the tour. I did not see anything compelling enough to change anyone's mind. I didn't see or feel anything paranormal on this tour. Having said that, I found the tour really interesting, not only the ghost stories, but on the history of Melbourne itself and some of its darker stories. It's certainly something different to do and a fun way to see Melbourne in a different light. Tours can be booked online at latinghosttours.com. On their website, they have a number of different ghost tours around Melbourne and elsewhere. Adult tickets at the time of making this booking were $36 per person. You can also book tickets on other websites such as TripAdvisor, Adrenaline, Get Your Guide. They all had the same price. Number two. One part of the ghost tour is that I'll about the jail. Now I did touch on this ghost tour in my other video on the top things to do in Melbourne where I did the daylight tour of the old Melbourne jail. At night, in the darkened lights, the jail becomes a lot spookier. The guy takes you around and will tell you stories experienced by workers at the jail, such as slamming doors. When there's no one else around, 
Stories that will get your hairs on the back of your neck standing up. Added to this, it's dark and the old jail is just creepy. I mean, this is where Ned Kelly was hung. Trevor was a guide on my tour. While he doesn't go too much into the history of the jail, that's more on the day tours. It's more about the experiences and the hauntings at the jail itself. Even the guide himself has experiences that he can't explain. Trevor will show you photos that, that other tourists have taken on their ghost tours. Some he can explain as fakes, others he has no explanation for. Some of the photos are just creepy. Not only that, Trevor's a really good storyteller, so it makes for an enjoyable tour. At the end of the tour itself, you're given around 15 minutes to explore the jail yourself. I turned on the night vision on my camera because of the low lighting, and that's why you get that green tinge to the video that you can see. If you do watch the video carefully, you can see some things flying past the camera at times. I think they're just insects, but a couple of my friends said they may have been orbs. I'm not so convinced of that, but let me know what you think in the comments. The most haunted cell at the jail? Supposedly is cell 17, with the reports of cameras playing up, and is where one of the most infamous photos was taken. I tried to look online for this photo, but I couldn't find it, so you just have to go on the tour to see it. In the 15 minutes that I did have, I took heaps of photos. I did go through them thoroughly at home, but I couldn't find anything paranormal in them. I don't know how Zach and Aaron do it all the time in their show. Overall, I did enjoy the tour. I wish I had a little bit more than 15 minutes to explore the jail though. As mentioned before, I did search online for photos of ghosts taken at the jail, but nothing compared to the ones they had on the tour. To book, you can go directly to the Old Melbourne Jail's website. At the time of making this video, it was $38 per person for an adult. It goes for about an hour, and the website shows you what days they run the tours. Number one, Pentridge Prison D Division Ghost Tour. And this one is Pentridge. This is a former prison that closed down back in 1997. It did hold some of Australia's most well-known criminals, including Chopper Reed. The prison is located in Coburg, a suburb of Melbourne, as shown here on the map. When you purchase a ticket, you'll get an email with the directions. In this tour, I wasn't allowed to actually film the tour itself, so please bear with me. You are allowed to film after the tour though. Again, this is a creepy place to start with, with a fantastic guide who tells lots of creepy stories. It sets up for a spooky, atmospheric ghost tour. You get to learn about some of the prisoners who were imprisoned here. One of the prisoners actually practiced dark arts, and there's a pentagon on his floor of his cell and is supposedly still haunted by the infamous brown out strangler. One of the people in the tour was actually put in this cell alone with the door shut. When they did open the door, she did say she felt a dark presence in there with her. If you are a bit of a sensitive, check out this cell. On the tour, you'll get to see photos taken from other tourists on these tours. They do look spooky, but they are taken on hearsay so you need to take it with a bit of grain of salt. There's also stories of Chopper Reed's ghost that supposedly haunts the place as well. At the end of the tour, you're given around 15 minutes to explore the prison, which again, I felt wasn't really enough time. I put the night vision on my camera on again for this part of the tour. I really enjoyed exploring the prison. I didn't get to see anything out of the ordinary, although one cell, it seemed to be a little bit foggy in there. I'm not sure if you can really see it on the video though. After watching a few ghost hunting shows myself, I tried to do a recording to see if I could pick up any ghost voices on the digital recorder. Okay, I'm going to do a recording. Is there anyone here who wants to get out of here? Say something to me. Is there anybody here? Unfortunately, I didn't pick up anything. I took lots of photos. Going through them, I did see this dark figure on one of the steps. When I zoomed up closer, I'm pretty sure it was just someone on the tour. So it's easy to see something that's not really paranormal. 
I had a quick look online for any photos of ghosts at the prison. There was one creepy one I saw, which you can see on screen, but have a search on Google yourself. You can book this tour online, again by Lantern Tours. You can book through their website directly. At the time of the video, it was $48 per person for an adult. This was my favorite ghost tour I did. From the location to the fantastic tour guide, it was just really creepy, informative, and lots of fun. I was left wanting more. I didn't mind that I didn't see a ghost or anything paranormal. It just left me wanting to do more. One place everyone keeps telling me about is the J Ward Lunatic Asylum Ghost Tour in Ararat, which I hope to do in the near future. Till then, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos, and I'll catch you next time.